So I guess we can all agree that we blame Tyler, right? Oh yeah. I mean, it's it's always Tyler's fault from now on. I mean, oh. as always, I'm the better Brit. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice we were recording, even though I oh, pressed the no. button. That is surprising. Uh, God damn it, Tyler. Well, he did steal all the cookies and spilled coffee on himself that one time, yeah. which yeah. totally makes him the guilty guy. Yep, uh, totally unprofessional. Totally, totally unprofessional. Uh. <sighs> it's fine, we just... Tyler. We still like you. Yeah, I, I guess. Sorry. <laughs> Kind of like uh, it's kind of like that long distance relative. It's like you like them, but you don't love them. It's like, oh hey, how's it going? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, we still love you, Tyler. We love you. <laughs> See, I knew it. All Brits know each other. Somehow that proves <laughs> this point. Yes. Yes, absolutely. It always proves the point. <laughs> right. Uh, so countdown. Oh God, my phone's going crazy. Ah. Uh... Let's go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Shift to Key podcast. I'm Luis, aka Sparenslav, and today we have... Uh, Matt Taylor Gibb, because Tyler didn't show up. <laughs> well, actually, Tyler did uh, tell me beforehand. I think he was one of the first people who told me he wouldn't be able to be here, because he is taking a career of crime in Gotham. Oh, something. very nice. According to him, no, the, this is uh, this is real. <laughs> uh, well, not the career of crime thing, but he did say that he was going to a party dressed as the Riddler. And uh, I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. He, he told me he bought the suit and all. I was like, all right, picture didn't happen. And he did send the, the pictures and it was a really cool looking suit. So, yeah, I saw the uh, the Twitter, that short little Twitter video he did, and I was like, damn, dude. Yeah, so... He got game. Be careful, Batman. <laughs> He's going to spill coffee on your bets, and you're going to get fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> or tea, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. It, it, I, it's, it's, normally, it's normally tea, but he, you know what? He might he might just go straight for the actual solids and might just start chucking stones at Batman instead. That might just be an easier solution. <laughs> like Batman, I see you have approached me this time. I shall defeat you. Have a scone, and just starts lobbing it. <laughs> Batman's just like, ah, oh, the bread products. Ah, oh, the bread related products. They hurt. And that's how we found out that Batman is allergic to gluten and wheat. <laughs> Uh, I, I do like the idea, though, that now B Batman can't have sandwiches. <laughs> Bad sandwiches, as he calls them. Alfred, Alfred, I need soup. Master, Br Master Bruce, you need to eat something more edible in your diet. I told you I can't have bread. <laughs> <laughs> you can fight crime if you have sandwiches. Well, at least you're, if you're Batman. Uh, and he just starts loafing around. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that actually reminds me of uh, the first topic that, uh -oh. yes, the uh, first topic we tweeted out this week. Uh, actually, it was a second, but, you know, let's just pretend that it was a first for the I'm sake of this conversation, yes. <laughs> um, which was graphic novels. Uh, do you read graphic novels? Um, often, I don't know if you count it as the graphic novel, but I've always counted it as a graphic novel. I actually have the Batman Nightfall series. Um, the ones that were done in the comics, they actually re-released it, uh, I think, as a graphic novel, as a trilogy. Um, so oh, you have... Um, it was um, Nightfall, Night Rises, and you had like, the other one. It's basically the story of um, Batman had in, having his back broke by Bane. And then you had that other character, Azrael, whatever his name was. He took over the Bane from the mantle from Batman. And it's like the little graphic novel, essentially, of the evolution of like someone else taking Batman's place and then Batman having to fight that other character. Um, but that's the only thing I've actually got. Um, I've got a local store that has tons and tons of graphic novels. But I think, I think the main thing that some people have to consider is what is a graphic novel, what is a comic? Yeah, I feel like the the line between those two is very thin sometimes. There's some stuff that you see and it's 
clearly a comic book and some other things you see and it's clearly a graphic novel but some others are kind of like uh maybe it's one of those two or maybe it's the two things at once yeah um i i've always considered that a comic book um like a graphic novel is obviously a much thicker production in my eyes um, everything else I kind of consider a comic, like a graphic novel. So like, I kind of expect like a good couple of hundred pages in where a comic books, like a hundred, not even that, like the old Simpsons comic books and stuff like that was just like, it was what, 50, 60 pages, something like that. It was nothing. Uh, <laughs> but, but you're right though. That, that line is, is incredibly thin. Um, I mean, like I said, I've kind of got some stuff local to me. That's kind of got like graphics and novels and stuff like that. Well, how about you? I mean, where do you kind of read and, Stuff like that. Do you read a lot of those, or? Yeah, I've, I feel like I've been getting to them more and more ever since. Uh, I don't know, maybe the past year or so. Uh, I've been reading other stuff that. Well, actually, yeah, uh, ever since the last year, or maybe even a little before, because I kind of stopped reading comic books when I found out that at the end of the first Marvel Civil War. Uh, they did the whole thing that they fucked up uh, Spider-Man, which I guess maybe spoiler alert, but it's a very old um, story. And, you know, people have probably figured that out by now. But uh, at the end of Civil War, Spider-Man did reveal his identity, but that led to like some people sending like hired killers after him and stuff. And one of these attempts against Spider-Man's life actually hit Aunt May. And she was hospitalized, and it's like Tony Stark and Mr. Fantastic try to help her, but they came to shit, and uh, she's almost dying. And then Mephisto shows up, which is like the, the devil of the Marvel Universe, or at least one of them. And uh, he's like, yo, I can hear your Aunt May if you and Mary Jane split up. And, you you know, just like that. I I think I've ranted about this before on the podcast. Long story short is, uh, Mary Jane agreed to it, even though Peter wasn't really into the idea, and they split up. And it's like, it, it became a whole fucking mess. And I was really pissed at that, because... It's not. It wasn't really those marriages in comic books that was like celebrity marriages, you know. Three months later, oh, it's over. It was something important to the character and to the character development of Peter. So, like, you know what? Fuck you, Marvel. Um, <laughs> a big, yeah, so... I spent, a big middle finger. <laughs> yeah, I spent, like, years without reading those. And then a friend of mine went to the U.S. one time, and she brought me back the first half of the superior Spider-Man story arc. And I thought, well, you know, I like Spider-Man, and what the fuck is this deal about Doc Cock uh, stealing Spider-Man's body? What the fuck? And it was actually a really fucking good story arc. And that got me back into into those comics. So I haven't read uh, the second Civil War yet. I did read the, la- the last Secret War and the Spider-Verse. Those were pretty good. But I feel like those are more comic books, you know? And uh, as for graphic novels, I, I that's the thing. I don't know if they qualify as such. But I am almost done with all things Fables. I finished the main series. I finished Jack of Fables. I'm currently working through the Wolf Among Us comic series. I did play the game. It was fucking awesome. And it's what introduced me to Fables. And then there's Ferris to read. It's all like spin-offs of the main Fables thing. And um, and I'm also reading The Walking Dead. I picked it up again. And uh, those two, I don't know if they count as graphic novels. I would but say I would do. say if anything, The Walking Dead is very much probably known for its graphic novels at this point. Um, outside of the the Telltale series and obviously the TV show, you know, if you asked me to name something Walking Dead related, I would have automatically assumed that it was the graphic novels. Um, it's I mean the ones that people go by is like The Walking Dead, The Killing Joke, which is another one, which is oh, Batman. That's art. fucking amazing. Yep. I agree. A Fables, which is obviously, and uh, Year One Batman as well, which is the other storyline that they did, which is another really good one as well. 
Um, I really, I've only ever really, 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 oh, for God damn it, fuck. Uh, <laughs> 55 hour work week, ladies and gentlemen, really schools with your vocabulary. Um, yeah, um, I really got as far as Nightfall, but there's a lot of ones I really want to pick up, but it's a case of I've got other things to save up for, and it's like, I can't really justify going out and spending the money, like, even for something like £12, I can't really justify going out and spending £12 on something I might read once. Uh, <laughs> It's, but yeah, no, back to your thing. I would automatically go with Walking Dead is a very much a graphic novel. Yeah, you know, the, the whole Batman stuff, uh, there was one I read. I am not sure if that's the name. I'm going to Google it right after I finish talking. Uh, I think it's something like, it, it's a, an Arkham story. But I'm not sure if it's called Hell on Earth or something. Uh, but it was really fucking good. Like there was this one time I picked up a few Batman graphic novels with the Arkham Asylum, because for me it's a really, it's really fascinating the way they portray, you know, the the Batman's enemies, and um, even though it's a really like, uh, can't remember the word for it. But, you know, uh, even though the way they portray insanity is kind of, like, twisted in a way to to justify the enemies being enemies and being bad guys and stuff, it's still interesting, uh, th- those storylines involving the Arkham Asylum, you know, the dark and mysterious past of the institution and all that, and how apparently that has some sort of influence over the, uh, the patients slash inmates that live there. So, you know, um, I think it actually... If it hit me that maybe the graphic novels are considered graphic novels when they have more of a mature content, you know? Because yeah. if you pick up, like, The Walking Dead, it, there's, like, mutilation and zombies, and uh, there's even... I'm not going to spoil it for people, because it feels like it's the sort of thing that it can be a spoiler no matter when you pick it up, but there's even some strong themes like uh, rape and you know, kids dying and stuff. So, you know, stuff that usually the, let's say, mainstream media of comics don't really touch that much, or at least it didn't uh, for a long time. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. I, it's a sign, a sign along that style of medium definitely belongs in a graphic novel. Um, but <laughs> I've always found as well that I can always get on with graphic novels as well, not because it's, oh, it's pretty colors. Um, but sometimes there's one thing with you you trying to always use your imagination to kind of, you know, especially with like a lot of novels and stuff like that. It's you trying to obviously trying to conjure up an image in your head. What I love about a graphic novel is you still get the thickness of a, of a really big book, like a really long book. But obviously you've got their own, like the, the, um, the artist's visual representation as well. And I love that as well, because it's like, well, here's how I see it. Oh my God, that's not how I expected to see it. Jesus Christ, that's real mutilation. Uh, <laughs> That is an arm turned uh, turn off. Oh God! <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, there's definitely they've they've we we'll always have that appeal with graphic novels and especially The Walking Dead. Uh, I don't think it would have been where it was to, had it not come out. So wait, wait, actually, that's a good question. Was it a graphic novel before the TV show? I believe it was, right? I think so. It is still coming out. Apparently, they're not done of the the series. Because um, it was one of those things, a lot of things normally get a kickstart through the visual representation or the sales from other, from other things, and then obviously people will pick it up. And So the graphic novels must have had some impact as well for it to have been as big as it was. So I'd like, yeah. I, no, sorry. What was it? No, it's all right. It's just that I, I've been reading them, and I'm still catching up. I'm, I'm not even in issue 100 but it's like 90-something, 96, 97. And there is some letter from the fans part. You know, uh, I forgot the name now. But they keep mentioning like season two of The Walking Dead is about to be released and all that. So that sort of gives uh, a certain time frame for it. Okay. But yeah, um, the other one that I mentioned as well, the, um, The Killing Joke, we both like that one. That, again, is a huge, huge graphic novel. Absolutely huge. Um, it's only 
big com- graphic novels do you think that we've missed off the list? Because we kind of named a, few, a quite a, few, a couple between us. I'm just trying to think what would be a big one that we didn't mention. Uh, I'm sure. Uh, the Watchmen could be maybe considered a graphic novel. Watchmen's you know, a graphic novel? Of... Is it? I didn't even know there was one. Was there, is there well, like a graphic novel? That's the thing. Like, yeah. it, I think it threads the... It treads the, the thin line, you know? Because it had the... F- a bunch of issues but not as much as you could say oh it's like a comic book uh, it had mature themes but you know it's i don't know i don't quite know i think so it might be considered one sin city i think sin city definitely falls into the graphic novel category yeah sin city i would agree with you on that one um I'm just trying to think. Because uh, you've got older graphic novels as well. It's not always just these comic and superhero ones as well. There's a lot of older ones, which is obviously where we, we you try and draw that line between what's a comic and what's a graphic novel. Because like I say, there's older things as well. Um, what was it? Oh, my God. i trying to remember the name. Sandman? Um, I, I haven't read Sandman yet, but I think it's graphic novel. But, yeah... Um, it's always nice to know that graphic novels weren't just starting off with like comic book heroes and stuff like that. Like graphic novels also have like other other genres involved in it as well. Yeah, yeah, that's that's actually a very interesting point. You know, indeed, it, there seems to be a big number of them about like average people. You know, in a very complicated situation or adventure or whatever. And I also get the feeling that a lot of the graphic novels that are definitely graphic novels, they are in the DC territory. I don't think that Marvel has released as many graphic novels because DC, if I'm not mistaken, owns uh, Vertigo and Dark Horse, maybe. And those two, like the, the focus of those two companies is pretty much graphic novel and mature uh books you know comic books or whatever not mature books as in 50 shades of gray <laughs> that's a whole different mature yeah that's no <laughs> that's get you that's uh, get your grandma well on the bus kind of mature oh christ <laughs> <laughs> um but no um i was gonna have a look it up and see if there's any famous um graphic novels that we've missed but it's almost exactly what we've been saying. Watchmen, um, Killing Joke, Year One, um, Walking Dead. There's a lot of them. Um, well, obviously, there's a lot of them. It doesn't just stop at five. Um, <laughs> what was the other one you said? What was it? Uh, st- oh, no, it wasn't Stitches. It's okay. Sandman? No, man. Um, I'm going to have a look at that now. Oh, uh, I da, 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 da. think I found here um, the graphic novel I mentioned. Is Arkham oh. Asylum Live in Hell? Ah, uh, okay. It goes for like six issues. Yeah, it's uh, Viva Vendetta is another one. Oh, right. Yeah, that one. Um, Watchmen is the new one. Um, and they say Morse. Oh my god, Morse, probably not. Uh, uh, probably not. Probably don't, don't read Morse. Don't read Morse. Um, why not? What's up with it? Uh, uh, <laughs> I just I just saw the front cover and it kind of really put me off with ever. Um, so the story of Morse as the story of v- Philadex. You have to really forgive me, audience, for the pronunciation on this. Beagleman, which is a, a Jewish survivor of Hitler's Europe and his son, a cartoonist, coincidence with his father's story. Uh, Morse's approach is unspeakable throughout the diminutive its form, the cartoon which were basically saying that um, the cats are Nazis and Jews are mice. Oh. And Morse is like, obviously, their take on everything. So it's a really, yeah, I, I read the description. It was like, oh, damn. Uh, yeah, oh, got... I think I've heard of that one. Is it like, does it have a swastika and a mouse head on the cover yes. or something? Yes, it does. Okay, yeah, I've heard of that one before. Okay. I yeah, think got... it has a different name or maybe it's the you see the thing about brazil is that sometimes we uh portuguesize things you know and we say them with our um i guess accent or 
take on the pronunciation of syllables and stuff. So here people usually say mouse, which yeah. is actually closer to mouse. But yeah, yeah, I've heard of that one. Um, then you've got other ones like Dark Knight Returns, which is basically the the first one that really showed Batman as like this aging, gritty, rather than like the kapowing Batman. Um, then we have um, things like League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, which I've I, it was a show here in England, but I've never actually heard it outside of that. It was also a movie. They had a movie adaptation for it. Ah. Um, and then, um, yeah, it's just your standard other things after that as well. Um, but yeah, um, that was really, really nice. Um, it was, that was a couple of graphic novels, which apparently are very, very highly rated. So yeah, graphic novels. Yay. <laughs> Ta-da. Ta-da. And, uh, one more students. thing about, uh, graphic novels. We were talking about the killing joke. They actually recently released um, an animated movie of The Killing Joke with um, with Mark Hamill voicing the Joker again. And I forgot uh, the guy's name who, who voiced... Well, pretty much all the, the classic Batman animated adventures uh, cast voicing their characters again. So, yeah, that was pretty yeah. cool. I, I managed to watch it. It was fantastic. Yeah, um... I would, I would actually very much like to see that if I can find that somewhere. Did, did you find that on the internet randomly, or was that something that was on like a like an internet service? You mean the the movie when I watched yeah. it? Well, it was released on uh, on a movie theater here in in my city, but it was like it was just one time, and like literally, it's release week, and. It's the only movie theater in town that is showing the movie. It was one time, it was like that week only or something. It was fucking bullshit. Oh. Then again, it's a movie theater that used to be great and now it's just going down here fast. <laughs> but no. uh, yeah, I managed to watch it on the internet. Okay. Then I too shall find it on the interweb somewhere. Yes, uh, you should do that. I should do that. Uh, I, do, I did like the graphic novel. So that actually fills me with high spirits for the for the for the movie as well. Like people were a bit, uh, not everyone, but there were some criticisms that they changed a few things here and there. But it's one thing that Hamill tweeted about that's like it's not a direct take from the the graphic novel to the movies. It's, you know, it's not like moving pictures from the graphic novel. They had to do a thing, a few things here and there, maybe to make it more appealing for today's, I don't know, generation or public or culture or whatever. Because it's kind of an old storyline too. Yeah, I think that kind of brings up a little bit of the appeal towards it, though. Like sometimes there are some things that just, just don't touch them, don't touch them. Uh, it still has that kind of vibe to it, essentially. Oh. Sorry, uh, oh. I was uh, getting some links ready here. Uh, okay. Cool. All right. So, then I guess we can move on to the next topic, right? Uh, sure. Which is, and I don't know if you have been keeping up with that one, but did you hear that there was a fan project for remaking the Star Wars Battlefront 3 game that was yes, almost ready I, and stuff. I believe at one point I was actually part of one of the podcasts where it came up. Yeah, I think so. Well, much like we predicted in that episode and pretty much everywhere else on the internet, it got shut down by EA. Yeah. It, yeah. Did you hear the backstory to it, though? Uh, I did hear a lot of stories about it. I'm not sure if I got all the details, so... Do so, go on. Um, obviously, this was basically... So the actual, Let's just kind of recap a few things, basically. Um, so the actual game itself was a follow-on from some of the details left behind for... Which game was it again? It was... Battlefront 3. Thank you. Yep, Battlefront 3. And then it was be a game which the... Um, so the... Oh, my God, I'm getting everything confused. The studio which was making it was Frontier Studios, I think. And I think yeah. they turned around. I think someone, or I think their head guy, or front rest, front, 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 
wire studios or footwear wire front front wire stu- jesus my 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 mouth I think <laughs> i think it's front wire i think the, front wire. the fan studio yeah i believe they basically said that they'd got like an approval from steam and they were able to release it and then that's kind of where everything kicked off um because i try to remember his name now i'm just going to call him tony tony sure, whatever tony. his name was <laughs> tony is whatever his name was um he got an agreement to actually go meet with the guys at Lucasfilm and basically pitch it to them. And he said it was like, because he made this whole blog about it as well. Um, he was like, oh, well, they kind of had like some serious moments and some like some lighthearted moments. And, you know, it went back and forth. But the ultimate line is what EA wants is what EA gets. I mean, that was basically like the TLDR version, like the too long didn't read version was basically EA got their way. And, yeah. and he was very much like, Oh, you can even put it as like a paid thing. Like, have it EA if you want it. Like, if you like, if you want it as a paid model, have it kind of thing. And they were like, nah, it would it would just distract us from the rest of the series that we're doing. You're good. I was like, no. Yeah, I mean, it's man, it's weird because it's something the fans want. You know, EA didn't even have to do that much work. They just needed to look at Battlefront Two. You know, give us updated graphics and like game modes that were already there, and maybe some new stuff. But they removed all the like a bunch of great things about Battlefront. And then there's Battlefront Three, which is almost ready, and they could have worked with these people. You know, EA, man, EA is such a fucking dick. <laughs> here's the thing: I, I fucking hate EA. That much is clear. Like Vic also is pretty much not a fan of EA. At this point in time, I, I don't think they have even that many fans anymore, but still, people buy their games. The thing is... Hey all. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do they manage, like, being the devil in the gaming industry and still people buying their games? Anyway. Um, no one else has the money, probably, to put the to put the effort into the projects that they require. Like yeah. EA, Madden, well, the... FIFA, Madden series alone makes them enough money that they can kind of just be fine. And so the thing is, they I did hear some stories like that that uh, the people from Frontwire Studios, I think that's the name. I'm sorry if I'm mistaken. Uh, but yeah, Tony. Let's say Tony. Hey, Tony. Uh, hey, Tony. He did go. <laughs> he did go to have a talk with um, Lucas Film, I guess, because Lucas Arts is dead, and there were actually kind of cool about it like they even said oh maybe uh ea is gonna be interested in letting you guys do the work and they get a a cut of the profits or whatever or something like that and then ea just barged into the door and was like no fuck you guys (laughs) so stop so they took that away from us but as much as they are a dick and it was a bit of a dick move there i can't quite blame them because they probably spent a lot of fucking money to secure the Star Wars rights for the next fucking decade or whatever. Unfortunately. But still, they did secure those rights and they paid a lot of money for that. So it kind of makes sense that they want to protect this property, you know. And let's say the game was fucking amazing. They would make money out of that. It would be great for them and all. But there's the other side of the coin, which is maybe the game was going to be fucking terrible. And then what? You know, it would it would be a major problem for them. Because it's a property that they are representing now. They'll probably have their name somewhere um, after an agreement or whatever. And, you know, it would it would hurt their image as a company because, you know, say what you want about their business practices, but at least their graphics are decent. (laughs) If there's one, if there's one good thing I can say about EA's that they make a nice looking game. Yeah. Yeah, no, I can see that. Um, I was gonna say going back to obviously how can EA possibly be like the devil of the game or above so everyone buys their games. When you think of how deep in EA is at this point, it's very rare to find a game that just isn't EA. Yeah. So it's, it, yeah, so it's a case of 
they are the devil, but everyone just keeps buying their stuff because they're involved in everything. <laughs> but everyone sold their souls to them. <laughs> yeah, everyone sold their souls to the devil. I mean, EA. But yeah, it, it really is. Like, they own a bunch of studios and publishers and shit, so they are everywhere, you know. That that is actually like I'm I'm probably shooting myself in the in the foot here, because if I ever were to have a career in voice acting or something, that is a pretty big slice of the market that will probably no longer be available. Oh, <laughs> if I, oh this guy fucking hates us. Well, fuck him too. <laughs> <laughs> Word of advice: Don't shit on people you expect to be employed by at some point. I guess, unless, you know, unless they're EA. I don't know. I think I'm too emotionally invested in this to give a decent piece of advice. Yeah. Um, it's... Hmm. Wait, what are you trying to convey in your sentence? Uh, simply put that I am really fucking mad at EA because of okay. their business practices and stuff. It's but basically like every time I shit on them... Babbidi boobdi, babbidi boobdi, babbidi, babbidi boobdi, and like that, and then just... Oh, hey, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. That was everywhere, that sentence. It was. That was something that I saw I'm from Family sorry. Guy one day. It was just someone going, babbidi boobbidi, babbidi boobbidi, babbidi boobbidi, babbidi. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, and there, there was the other point that, you know, if I were to ever get a job with the voice acting industry, for some reason, that would be a be big slice it. of the market <laughs> that yeah. I would have lost. <laughs> it's like, uh, uh, Louise, Louise, uh, we need you to come in and do a couple of characters for us, not just one, but we want to pay you to kind of voice a couple of different ones in the game. Yeah, sure. Uh, by the way, who's calling? Oh, it's uh, it's uh, Steve at EA. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sir, we can make a really promising contract with you. You can get paid really nicely. The royalties would be great. Nah, I'd rather suck my own dick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Shout out I, I to Steve from EA. <laughs> shout out to Steve. That's, that's someone's going to find like a random Twitter account and it would just be like Steve from EA and then just be like, Mass Halo <laughs> Gear said this about you on the on the podcast. And it'd be like, where is he? Uh, um, I, 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 I'm, I've always been both ways with EA. Um, I grew up playing EA games. That's predominantly my thing. It was always FIFA and then after that it was the Tiger Woods games like 2004, 2005. And you, I, would, I went through literally the evolution of these fucking sports games as a child. And then I, I still get mad at them because obviously I don't like microtransactions. Well, I do and I don't. I have a love-hate relationship with that as well. Um, I don't like the fact though that obviously it's the same as a FIFA game. The servers aren't always reliable. The online play is atrocious. They have microtransactions, so of course it's instantly a money grabbing opportunity for them. But at the end of the day, I can't get my fill of sports games from any other company in the world. So I have to kind of push through the shit and wade through it with my walking boots to get to the bit where I can clean it off at the end. <laughs> yeah, it, it is kind of like that because if I'm not mistaken, they do they own Activision? EA, do they? I could be mistaken, but I if they about do, I very much look that up. Uh, EA Active. If they do, oh. they own like the like all things exports, you know, like skating and maybe bicycle stuff. They released a bicycle game like fucking long time ago, I guess, and all the other ball sports and stuff. So yeah. If Ooh. there is a ball or a strictly thing that spins, Ye probably has a right to them. And it, it is something interesting that you brought up because I also grew up playing a lot of Ye games, like the the Harry Potter games, the um the Need for Speed games and all that. They were great. You know, there was a time that EA was a, a pretty good company. But then with the, all, all the like microtransaction stuff and the aggressive DLC uh, business practice and all that, you know, it just man, it was too much to keep on subscribing to their ideas and stuff, you know. No, so like course. oh yeah, I fully support this company, even though they're fucking everyone over without so much as paying buying them a coffee or a dinner. <laughs> you know, ding ding ding. So as far as I can see on the Activision Wikipedia, real, real reliable, as we all know. There is an Activision Wikipedia? Oh yeah, absolutely. Huh. 
We should uh, do a... Uh, no, I'll talk about that another time. I was going to say, it'd be really good if the Shifty Keys did that version of the Wikipedia game. We have to try and get to a topic from this one. We have to start the Activision Wikipedia page. Uh, as far as I can see, on on the Wikipedia... get On the Wikipedia... On the, on the Wikipedia page... Bell check. Uh, um, I can see stuff about Sledgehammer Games and stuff like that, like um, Aqu- um, Activision and Bungie kind of partnering up. But I don't see anything about EA. Um, um, Activision's acquired a couple of studios in the past, um, like Seven Studios. Um, they acquired Freestyle Games here in the UK. Um, and they had a couple of other acqu- acqu- acquisitions acquisitions over the years but there's nothing about ea oh maybe i was mistaken it was uh most likely you were mistaken um and yeah and then they announced that beachhead studios would develop the elite website for call of duty and apart from that um basically activision just helps out major league gaming now with um esports activities uh tj if you can please insert the snoop dog gif again you know mlg MLG Doritos um, something something Mountain Dew <laughs> I actually uh, drank a bit of Mountain Dew the other day it was it was pretty good thought it would be far sweeter but no it's pretty good I have pretty much now kicked soft drinks right in the ass um, I don't have them anymore somehow some way I somehow managed to get away from fizzy drinks don't ask me how. Don't ask me. That's just a lot of water shoved down my throat and just pray for the best. Uh, <laughs> oh, man, water. Careful yeah. with that. <laughs> oh, man. Well, you never know. Well, man, that's, that's actually like a pretty good thing. It's something that I think I'll have a really fucking hard time doing. It's not like I drink soft drinks every single day, five times a day, you know. But still, I do like my soft drink every once in a while. I think like at least once a week uh, I have some. Oh, uh, I'm just sitting here shaking my head. Nope. Nope. <laughs> well, you know, it is still better than drinking crack. Drinking crack? I think you're doing it wrong. Well, you know, if you, <laughs> if you have a blender, Stuart, you can do all sorts of shakes. <laughs> like the crack shake. Oh, my God. Both Don't. terrifying, also a very curious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do not try this at home. That's or, the little message you put across the screen. It's like, yeah. do not try this at home. Actually, um, don't don't smoke or don't do crack in any other way. You don't want it to be a crack case. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Plot twist: <laughs> EA owns crack. Oh. What's worse, EA or crack? Uh, EA, clearly. Uh, come on. No, no, plot twist. Oh. EA owns crack. Oh, right. Sorry, I thought you said uh, what's worse, like EA or crack, and I was just thinking, oh, EA is much worse. <laughs> EA is much worse. Stay EA takes your it. soul. Crack will just take your life. <laughs> Both but take you need... your money, though. Yeah. <laughs> Very good point. I was about to say, but you need your soul for the afterlife. You can take my physical body, but you cannot take my soul. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned for the next episode in which we discuss which one is worse, the Illuminati or EA. <laughs> <laughs> What's worse for you, Donald Trump or the Euro dropping? <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, man. Speaking of stuff dropping, um, actually, it's like going to be a really quick segment. Maybe we're going to end up talking about the Olympics every single episode from now on until it's over. But did you watch the opening ceremony yesterday? No, I saw I saw a couple of the BBC highlights, but I didn't see the full ceremony. I heard it was really vibrant and nice. Yeah, actually, the like I had a few gripes. Is that a word when you're not really happy with some yeah, things? That's yeah, good. I, that's good. I had a, a few gripes with a thing or another that they put in there but overall it was like modesty aside because you know it's my country but (laughs) i think it was really fucking good it certainly made the the world cup opening look like uh a backyard barbecue you know yeah nothing wrong with backyard barbecues but it's not like the sort of 
uh, party you throw for a, a big event, such as a World Cup, you know? Yeah. I mean, the World Cup essentially was um, a, a great chance for the football fans to kind of get into it. It was a very, ca- even sporting events, most of the time, I would consider a casual affair at best. But the Olympics, there was so much going on about whether it was going to be on, whether it wasn't, whether it was going to be called off, whether it was the safety, the Zika virus, this or that. And you're just thinking to yourself, I don't know what it's going to be like. I'd like I was worried that some of the stadiums still not might not be built. But they did. <laughs> well, no, it's mostly because that was a lot. Was one of the things going into the World Cup was, oh, the, some of the stadiums aren't going to no, be built in time. I'm laughing because I don't want to cry. You know, it, oh. I don't know if you guys have that expression in English, but here in Portuguese, you laugh we have so the hard. One. You you laugh so hard. You you like you you do that instead of crying. Yeah. No, no, not quite. Ma- it's uh, at least in Portuguese, there is a saying that goes like. Uh, laughing in order to not cry you know oh <laughs> i i don't know that one no it I, does maybe make you a lot guys more word sense. it differently but yeah so uh th- you're correct like the the worries about the stadiums not being read and stuff a lot of people here were worried as well you know <laughs> some <laughs> I like of the you were just as worried as we are it's like oh shit dude <laughs> man it's like getting guests at your house and like there's shit on the walls and stuff you need to clean that up you know before people arrive and um I don't think it's quite that bad. Like you, you turn up and you're into human defecation and you just look at the wall and just go, <laughs> Is that a new art style? And it's just like, no, nah, well, well, I mean we're gonna go with the we're gonna go with the Jackson Pollock look, but I didn't have enough beans this morning. <laughs> uh, it's not shit, it's graffiti. <laughs> it's not yeah, it's not shit. You see, look, there's an R. No, you just use your finger to write that. Look, look it's still wet. I have enough to modify it. <laughs> Going around just with a finger, just a little pfft. Wow, you you don't have any culture in you. This is modern art. <laughs> Avant garde stuff, bitch. I, I I like I like when people say modern art and my mind goes to like um and I've gotta try and um I can't remember the name I think it's Damien Hurst, who is the guy who did the Angel of the North here in England, which is basically just like like a very big wooden guy on a cross, angel kind of thing. It looks really cool. If you see it in person, like if you see it on the internet, it's, it's like someone just stuck a bunch of wood planks in the middle of a field. Um, but to me, I kind of see that as modern art, and I like the idea of now someone building like a sixty-foot shit. <laughs> that was a very weird segue. We just went from talking about the Olympics to a sixty-foot shit, but we did it! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, no, I'm. I was very much looking forward to the Olympics, but it's mostly the football thing. Like I said, I'm very much a football guy. So to me, by the way, what the? I don't know how much of it you saw. I saw the Brazil Cameroon game. What? <laughs> I didn't watch it. I was busy this morning working. Uh, it didn't happen today. It happened a couple of days ago. Oh really? Uh, well, wow, shit. <laughs> it, it was yesterday, I think. Yesterday, the day before, at most. Well, but it was yeah, my sister's like, birthday yesterday, anyway. Ah, uh, okay. Um. But Brazil had this great lineup, and I'm talking, it had one of the best players in the world, this fantastic young talent who's moved for like 25 million pounds to England. Like, his name is, the, his name on the shirt says Jesus, for fuck's sake. Like, <laughs> it's, it's like God's gift to earth in his football form. And they drew with what was a very, I looked at the paper, I looked at the team sheets before, with a very underwhelming Cameroon side. And I looked at that team sheet and went, I feel like you asked me to put money. I say like four or five nil Brazil and you drew nil nil. And I heard, and I love you Brazilian. I love the Brazilians because of how passionate you are about sport because your team drew nil nil and you booed them off the fucking field. Like <laughs> you suck. You suck. And it's like, cause you expect so much greatness in your sport. And I love it. I was just like, yeah, I'd, I'd be pissed too. I'd be pissed too. If the, if the golden boys couldn't win, I was like, I'd be pissed too. <laughs> Shout you, out to us. <laughs> yeah, but but like I say, I saw the highlights of the ceremony. You guys actually, you did a really good job. Like I say, I had a lot of worries about the event. Um, the one thing I am a bit pissed off though is the amount of good golfers that aren't going to show up this year because it's like, oh, golf's back at the Olympics. They can make let's make it the spectacle. By the way, and someone said the word Zika, and all the sportsmen in the golf just went, nah, now nah, we're good. It's like, dude. dude. <laughs> This is your chance to win the first Olympic golf gold medal in, I think, ever, actually. And it's just a case of, nah, Bofa sounds good. <laughs> it's just like, Man. oh. Use Replant. 
Yeah, but yeah, exactly. You know, like if you take the proper precautions, you don't. You're not really going to be at a higher risk for it. But yeah. Uh. But anyway, uh, there was there was something like uh, I even mentioned it with my sister before, and I was like, man. I'm going to have some shit to talk about tomorrow, you know, the record. <laughs> and then she pointed out that maybe I did enjoy, like, the parts I had some gripes with, it was probably because of personal taste. Because at some point, like, they switch from um, Tom Jobim to Funky, you know. Uh, and the Brazilian funk, it's no James Brown funk. It's a really shitty funk, in my opinion, at least. And so they went from this very, like, uh, this very well-known stu- uh, kind of music outside of Brazil to something that, quite honestly, is just really poor in taste. You know, the lyrics for funk songs are just awful. But then again, they didn't quite pick those ones with the very awful lyrics. Thank God. Um, but there was one thing that I think it was universally bad, at some point, the people dancing, they did like five seconds of twerking. It's an international event, for fuck's sakes. You don't twerk. Please don't. Hey, yo, Bob, I got this sweet, mighty Cyrus move. You want to sit? Yeah, bro, <laughs> we're like totally show off at the Olympics. <laughs> well, we should use this for the Olympics. I, c- I love the event organizers going, man, we need a bit more of an international taste so people understand our way of like showing off. <laughs> <laughs> twerking? Yeah, sure. I mean, us Brazilians are known for the twerks. Yeah, sure, go for it. That's fine. <laughs> like, it's the guy with the clipboard was like, and it's like that one guy, like, Jim from the office just comes up and just goes, boss, <laughs> boss, I have this really great idea. You're going to love it. And he's like, yeah, 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 do whatever you want. Get out of my face. And the guy's like, oh, really? And he's like, yeah, 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 just get out of my face. And Jim's like, everyone, twerk. <laughs> I think you were here for the episode of the ass beating slash ass pounding gif, weren't you? Yes, I was. <laughs> I even mentioned with a few friends of mine afterwards, like, man, I'm just disappointed that there was no ass-pounding dance move. <laughs> <laughs> that would have left people so goddamn confused, because twerking's like, every single country has people twerking, I, I would assume. Fuck it, even penguins are probably twerking right now, but, man... The, the that sounds amazing. That sounds amazing. That sounds like a, that. That is something at the zoo I'd love to go see. It's like, mom, have you seen the twerking penguins? I have, and the emperor looks amazing. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, so yeah, really. you know they they could have used that one. Oh well, maybe in the next international event. Who yeah, knows? Uh, what is after this? I think it's the Winter Olympics or the World Cup in 2018. I think it's the next big. One is either the winter, I think it's the Paralympic Games as well, or something like that. There's a lot. There's a lot of international events. Um, go, go figure. We were a fucking globe. Yeah, go figure. There's a lot of international events. <laughs> Jesus, Stuart. Uh, <laughs> Mom, when's the next international party? It's two years from now. Okay, we have to kind of sit back, let the party streamers sit back in the cupboard for a while. We're good. Um, it's, I think it's about two years from now, because they normally have the World Cups every four years, and then in between that, then you also have the 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 obviously the Olympic Games. So I think it was like um, 2000 was the Olympics, 2002 World Cup, 2004 Olympics, 2006 World Cup, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, it'd probably be two years from now. Yeah, probably. Well, I um, mean, depending on what you consider an international event, Vic apparently is planning to go visit Tyler, which is one of the reasons why she hasn't been able to be on the podcast recently. And over the next few weeks, uh, she's like getting ready for traveling. I think actually by now she is traveling. I think she's on her vacations or something. And uh, and it seems like she's going to visit Tyler at some point, or at least they were planning on it. That is kind of an international event, if you think it about it. It is an international event. I mean, also, USA I found, and I England. I found something out about Vic the other day. Sorry, what? I found, I found something out about Vic the other day. Golfer. I was yeah. like, yay, I know another golfer. Um, and I didn't say gopher, I said golfer. That'd be yeah, really funny. Yeah, Vic if, golfs. If, yeah, that, um, apparently, because um, um, I sent out a tweet the other day, something about golfing. And she replied to it, and she was like, you play golf? And I was like, yes. 
But yeah, no, it's uh, I'm going to use it as an excuse that if they're both out for the day, I'm going to go find out. I'll be like, I'll, I'll hang out too. I'll, I'll, I have a day off in August. I'll join. You should absolutely challenge them for golf. Game of golf. Um, just like just like driving range and just see how good Vic is. I want to see Tyler <laughs> try and use a golf club and I'll record it with my GoPro. <laughs> Tyler, the Brits at the golf room, the, the driving range and it'd just be like us sitting around in suits with a cup of tea. Oh, you... Oh, yes. Oh, that ball, it went miles, didn't it? Oh, yes, hundreds of yards. <laughs> and then there'll just be Vic in the middle just going, what, what the fuck are you two doing? <laughs> Don't forget your monocles and to grow a mustache. I, I actually just shaved. That's a really weird tangent as well. Yeah, I just recently shaved because I actually got told to at work because I kept standing around scratching this facial hair trying to grow through. But I can't grow a beard. It's well, it's well documented throughout my life. I can't grow a beard. Like I grow like the the Civil War type facial hair, and then I stop. Like My body just goes, you're done. You're done. That's enough. That's your look. You're done. And I actually had to shave it because when I had the like, tiny bit of hair come through, I was like, itch, 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 itch. And I, just, I, had to, I was told by my boss, he was like, go home, you're shaving, and you'll come back in tomorrow clean-faced, okay? I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, boss. <laughs> Sorry, boss. Which um, is, yeah, it's interesting that after a while, it stops itching. But me, for example, like I, I shave a bit of the, um, of the neck. Um, so uh, that part that I shaved of the neck, when it starts growing back again, it also itches quite a lot. Okay. You know, because of the hair coming out. But the rest of it, like the, the rest of my neck and uh, the chin, the cheeks and all that that just stops itching after a while nice i found that for a while obviously you get that shaving cream that shaving cream that shaving balm that you can kind of put in afterwards i found that worked quite well but then after a while it was just literally just a case of i was essentially just feeling like i was rubbing lotion onto myself and that kind of creeped me out <laughs> <laughs> it's like because i actually because here's a couple of things about me that uh, i hate one, I can't wear proper deodorant. I have to wear that roll-on liquidy kind of one because I can't. My skin doesn't like normal deodorant or antiperspirant, so I have to wear that roll-on stuff. So of course, it leaves a white mark immediately as soon as I put it down my armpits. It leaves a horrible white mark on my shirt. The other thing that I can't do is, um, I don't. There's there's quite a lot of shaving creams and stuff out there that make me itch for whatever reason. So I actually shave now without cream. I just shave. Jesus Christ. I just shave bare and then I will use a balm afterwards. The, the, the balm doesn't upset my skin, but it's just shaving cream. Because then it's just shaving cream. Shaving cream will hurt my skin and just be like, ow, 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 ah, oh, oh God, ow. So I just have, I, so I shave bare now. So like shaving facial hair bare, that's a pain. And I mean, that's yeah, an actual pain. Yes. But it's Good about as much pain as the, as the cream is. <laughs> so. Yeah, uh, fun little fact, ladies and gentlemen. I pretty much just shave bare. There are some things that I oh, actually that's a conversation for a different con. That's a conversation for a different podcast altogether. I won't go there. Don't worry. Ignore that last bit. Don't. <laughs> okay. Quick question: <laughs> Do you shave bears? Do I shave bears? Oh, Goldilocks asked me to help out once with that. Um, uh, she had a real big problem. Um, there was three of them. One found that the razor was too cold. One didn't like the cream because it was too thick. And the other one um, found that the razor was just right. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect answer. <laughs> Perfect answer. <laughs> Man, have you ever watched those videos like, um, like those Indian head massages and stuff? Oh, I know where you're going with this. Yes, I have. Man, and I... I want to try that stuff at some point in life. I want to watch that video so much that it becomes ingrained in my brain and I start doing it on the street for people. <laughs> like, <sighs> Come here, I learned with Baba. <laughs> How did you study with him? Well, I did watch his video like a hundred thousand times. And it's like, so yeah, where did you start this? Look, I listened to a man very, very deeply breathe in and out on top of you whilst spraying a water bottle. But that that video, like... I can listen to ASMR and it doesn't do a lot because I have to wear some comfy headphones. Otherwise, for me, I feel like 
I can't relax when I listen to it. And also, I sometimes use ASMR to kind of get to sleep, like when I first discovered it. But the problem is, I would go five minutes into it, I'd fall asleep, lay on the headphones, I'd roll over, and I'd automatically feel the headphone, and I'd have to stop listening to it. I'd be like, well, I can't listen to headphones in bed. And I'd chuck it away. Um, but that that barber video, those barber videos, wow, dude. That's that's some good shit. Yeah, that's something. <laughs> uh, when I... I first watched that video and I had no fucking clue what ASMR was because back when I found it, I don't think it was really a thing. And, uh, well, you really I, just called I, someone I, crazy I think... for doing it, right? It's like, I'm yeah, it's, I, yeah, it's a really, if you think about it, it's sort of a weird concept, you know. Uh, in some of the videos, I'm going to be honest here, and I don't mean to shit on other uh, content producers, you know, other con makers because in a way we we are uh people making content on the internet but some of the concepts for asmr videos are kind of weird to say the least yeah i like, where you see that like there's some I, like, really weird stuff going on there but are some spe- that are okay yeah there was very spe- specific asmrs like you wouldn't listen to that in your wildest dreams but you know someone out there will get a kick from it yeah like food really isn't it like you can't have one person eat like one person won't eat this but i'll have the other version of it it's like oh hey i don't eat tomatoes but i'll have tomato sauce it's like well i listen to this video but you listen to that one yeah like my my favorite one and i've got to see if i can um it was someone and this is the weirdest one because especially when you're sleeping it's not the thing you want to think of it's someone doing a haircut and it's uh, it's the idea of like the scissors when they're like, trimming your fringe and stuff like that, and they've got the very tiny pair of scissors, and they're going, snip, 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 snip. And there's something about that. There's something about that little, the scissors going, snip, snip, snip. That just makes me feel so relaxed, even though I know that the idea is it's meant to be at the, like, literally, like, literally as if he's, as if he's, like, cutting your hair. Quite creepy, but it's also very, very relaxing. Actually, now that I think about it, there are a few... Well, here... Um, at least my city, we call these gourmetized places because what's gourmetized? Hang on, you know the word gourmet, right? Oh, sorry, yes, sorry, yeah, it's 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 weird because it's like the whole thing about gourmet stuff here in Brazil. uh, Usually, you add the word gourmet and you can add another like 40 Brazilian bucks just because it's different, quote unquote, you know. So there are these places that we call gourmetized, even though they don't serve food. Uh, so there are some barber shops here that are gourmet barber shops, in a way. Maybe they probably work with that, with head massages and stuff. I should check it out. But then again, anything that's too much of a novelty around here costs a lot of fucking money. <laughs> I'm talking like I've seen once uh, a place that gives you like a haircut uh, shave and they serve you whiskey for whatever reason and it costs like I think at the time oh god I can't remember but it was an absurd amount it was like I, I don't know fucking 80 bucks for like 80 Brazilian reais for a haircut and man we we don't usually pay that much for at least a male haircut I it is my understanding that usually female haircuts cost a lot more for whatever reason. Maybe it's because it's more hair. I don't know. At least it, it does here. But yeah, it was a lot. Let me see if I can find that on the internet. Then again, we should jump to questions. Oh, God. Just whilst we find the questions, says um, the channel on YouTube that I was referring to. Sorry, it wasn't a he, it was a she. Um, it's, um, it's called Gentle Whispering. That's a really nice channel. Like, you can't really miss it. It's got, like, several hundred thousand subscribers. But um, that ASMR channel, an absolute beauty. It really is. Um, but, yeah, like, I can watch, I can listen to some, re- like, I can watch that video, but I can listen to it, and it'll be, it'll, like I say, it will kind of really help me relax and stuff like that. So, yeah. Anyway, questions. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, they don't have the price here on the internet. God damn it. Still. Uh, oh, here. Found it. Yay! Hold up. Uh, oh, oh, fuck. It's even worse than I thought. Let's see. There is one There is one thing. Um, I might as well announce it here. 
Um, I am back on the Moose Deep website. Oh, you didn't say that before. Um, that's because I kind of I haven't actually got anyone added on the website, and I'm not under my name. I am a completely different name. Oh, it's a new like, account. It is a new account. Um, because I'm watching the Heroes and Halfwits, so I'm watching some of the theater modes now. Really good. I'm actually really glad. Like, it might be worth actually staying as a first member, and just kind of keeping a kind of keeping the account for a couple of groups and that. But yeah, that was a. That was a that was a decision I made like a couple of nights ago. I was watching because um, they Funhouse did the release of their D and D series, and uh, yeah, I decided that now was a good a time as any because I was like, oh well, I want to see how it kind of plays out because I missed the whole Heroes and Halfwits D and D prequels to the actual release. I was like, cool, yeah. I'll, apparently, they're going to edit it down for YouTube. So I was like, oh, I want to see the full version. Really funny, really good stuff. I was like, yeah, this is worth staying a first member for. I'm actually glad I am one. So. Yay, first members. Cool. Well, Yay. let us know the, the count afterwards so that we can uh, put on the link here. We, I don't know if I've ever noticed that, but we put a link to the restrictive account. And uh, I've been putting for the Mass Halo Gear account, so. And well, the Mass Halo Gear, obviously, is, <laughs> Mass Halo Gear went long ago. Um, Mass Halo Gear was, what, last August? Jesus Christ, that makes me feel old. It was a year. Well, essentially, I went for a year. I was on a sabbatical. <laughs> <laughs> you went on a journey to discover yourself. Yeah, I uh, I couldn't find the prices here. Uh, oh. It was like Google gave me a price like that, and I was like, oh, wow, that's the answer. And then I clicked the, the link, and it was actually the price for another barbershop. They were comparing barbershops. Yeah. So, yeah. Still, uh, take my word for it. It was really fucking expensive. I don't know how it is now. It was expensive back when they opened, and it was, like I said, a novelty. It was the first time there was, uh, there was a barbershop like that, you know, in my city. But then others started opening up, so maybe it's lower. I should actually check those things before I give such vague information. But, you know, entertainment podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't plan yeah. this beforehand, too, so sorry about that, audience. I'm not trying to be half-assed here. Sorry. <laughs> Half and fast, uh, shifty key podcast, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somehow let's pin this on Tyler. God let's damn pen it, Tyler. This, let's pin this all back on Tyler again. Right, so, uh, questions. Questions. God damn it. Oh, shit. <laughs> questions. Oh, God. Questions. Yeah, I choked with my own spit. That was, man. Amateur uh, hour. Uh, All right. Ew. So this one was sent by Dr. Sparks, and she asked, if you had to listen to one band for the rest of your life, what would it be? Uh, do you count bands as solo artists as well? Uh, should we just say musician? Or do I have to yeah, pick a band? Sure. No, it could be a, a... I think it counts as a single musician. Oh, Elvis Presley, without a shadow of a doubt. Oh, really? That's cool. Yeah, I grew up listening to it. Like my mum and de- my mum is a huge Elvis fan. I listened to the LP. Like the LPs apparently were what put me to sleep as a child. Like Screw Nursery Rhymes, like Heartbreak Hotel. Um, well, uh, uh, the other day I can do a, a real cracking accent, baby. Um, <laughs> I kind of sound like a a little bit of a what's his name? Uh, Nickelodeon character. Um, Jolly Bravo. Hey there, mama. Uh, <laughs> that was Cartoon Network. <laughs> yeah. Still, um, really good Elvis impression. I used to do um, a bit of karaoke for him, for him, as him. It would have been weird if I did karaoke for Elvis when he died before me. <laughs> well, um, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. He died in the toilet, faggot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, Elvis, Elvis, great guy, great guy. Saw the earth. Um, Still alive off- somewhere in the Bermuda Triangle. Yes, absolutely. With Amelia Earhart, absolutely. <laughs> um, I guess my answer won't come as a surprise for the audience, but... The Fratellis. That's a really good choice, so. Yeah, I fucking love that band. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I, I wish Chelsea Dagger could be like the theme song of my life. Can we have Chelsea Dagger as the new theme song for the Shifty Key podcast? Yeah, Tyler, uh, let's work on asking the Fratellis if they will be okay with that. <laughs> and put it on the, the intro song. Actually, uh, I think Tyler and I mentioned that again uh, a lot of podcasts ago. But our first uh, 
proper theme song, you know, one made by us, actually Tyler, but, you know, uh, the actual... Uh, Shifty Key made theme song da, 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 da. that was inspired by one of the Fratelli songs really? yeah it's called uh, Three Skinny Girls and Tyler asked me oh so how do you want this to sound I was like well uh, I don't quite know but it could be like I, I would like to have the same energy as maybe this one and then I sent the link for uh, Three Skinny Girls and it's like it's fast paced, you know the it's catchy and all that. So that's it's served as sort of an inspiration for the first theme song. Don't know that. That's actually interesting. <laughs> yeah, I'll put a link to the link shitter. Yeah, I definitely did talk about that previously. I remember saying I I was going to put it on the link shitter. I did and all that. Yeah, I'll do it again. Why not? And the next question is by Sonny Date P, and he asked, um, "Team Valor, Team Mystic, Team Instinct, uh, Instinct, or Team Rocket?" God, um, I am Team Mystic, but I did want to be Team Rocket as a child. So I always, I always felt sorry for them in the Pokemon games because it was a case of you always have this overwhelmingly dominant Pokemon, and you go up to him and just be like, "Yeah, you suck. Beat your Pokemon up." <laughs> Uh, but Team Mystic, Team Mystic all the way, just because blue is my favorite color. So Valor is the red one, right? It is indeed. Valor is red, Mystic is blue, and Team Instinct is yellow. I've got to admit, if I went back and changed my team, like I would pick Valor just because everyone in my neighborhood is Valor, and it seems like I can't take over a gym. <laughs> because every time I have a gym battle and I beat the goddamn thing, it gets taken back a minute later by someone else in Valor colors. I'm just like, there's no point. I'm not a high enough level to compete with you guys. Like, I beat you and you beat me back. It's like, like get my face pressed into the dirt. <laughs> like, well, I would go back and be valid just for that. I would be like, yeah. <laughs> I'm one of the cool kids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I picked Valor then. Um, see, the thing is, I was playing Pokemon Go with my sister. And uh, she was like, oh, we should pick the same team. And uh, I was trying, like I was saying, oh, yeah, but Instinct is sort of the underdog. You know, it could be, uh, for whatever reason, it seemed fun to maybe join Instinct just for the hell of it. She was like, yeah, but why join the losing team? And I was like, oh, oh. shit, snap, son. <laughs> um, to give you an idea of my neighborhood, ladies and gentlemen, just a very quick roundup. There's three gyms within... I mean, uh, I mean, if, if, if I was to have it plot out in me, it's like in a straight line from my house to that gym. It was about probably about 800 meters to each my house. It's actually quite a close village. The first gym is Team Mystic, which is good. Yay, blue team. And it's a Vaporeon, a Scyther, and a Snorlax. The next one, you're about to notice a real similarity between the teams in our village. The next one is a Team Instinct gym. And it's a Pidgeot, a Vaporeon, and a Vaporeon. <laughs> and, then the, and then the final one, which is the park, which is where I, I hate having to go to this park for the Pokestop because it's right in the middle of a kid's play area. So you feel really dodgy going up with your phone, swiping it, and then walking away. Uh, <laughs> you really do feel bad because um, I hear now, oh my God, there's a Pokemon over there. I can see the brush and bush. Shit. But oh, never mind. Well, I can't get there. Anyway. <laughs> The last one is Team Instinct again, and it's a um, and it's it's my favorite one of the three because it's got the least amount of members for a team. It's a Lapras and a Snorlax. The Lapras is eighteen hundred, and the Snorlax is twenty two hundred. It's a oh. it's a dom like the guy who owns the Snorlax is a level thirty. <laughs> Holy shit! And the Lapras is a level twenty two. And I'm that... over here at level. 15 just turned 15 like i just got my first ever hyper potion and my Man. highest level pokemon i've got all three evolutions my highest pokemon's an 855 and that's the vaporeon that is a lot that's a lot of levels that guy has that that's too it's um in brazil people started as i predicted uh, and a lot of other people predicted that as well. People started getting mugged while playing Pokemon Go. No <laughs> shit. Uh, and uh, there was there's actually like a joke that it's going to be funny just if you speak Portuguese 
Otherwise, it's just it's not gonna make any fucking sense at all. But uh, to quickly try to explain, and then people think it's fucking boring. Uh, so spoiler alert. There, back when they announced it, uh, Pokemon Go, I think it started off as an April Fool joke or something, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Back when they announced it, people made a, a like a comic strip. You know, one of those rage uh, comics. And I was like, oh, Pokemon in this dark alleyway. And then the guy goes in there and a dude jumps out of nowhere and says it's a Bulbasauro, which is a <laughs> mixture of Bulbasaur and Asalto, which is one of the words we use for robbery. So it's like Bobo robbery or whatever. It's way funnier in Portuguese, trust me. Okay. And now people are... <laughs> The news haven't started doing that yet, but people are calling these muggings because of Pokemon Go as Bulbasautos. So oh my god. <laughs> they're their own particular sort of crime, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, we've had another we've had another Bulbasito. Oh, <laughs> god damn it. And as soon as I said that, as soon as I said that I saw a Twitter my, my Twitter feed, the words came up and another one. It just said, and another one. Like, no relation, obviously, to the context of our conversation, but I just looked down and said, and another one. I went, Jesus, they act fast. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I got really freaked out. I was like, what? So, yeah, to wrap up Sunny's question, Team Valor, or maybe Mystic. Team Rocket, because they have a talking cat. Yes. All right. Um, so... I was going to ask a Tyler question, but I think we have done all the Tyler questions. Huh. Right. So I think that does it for this week. We have other questions here, but uh, let's save them for the next episodes. So now, Stuart, comes a time that no one is ever prepared, apparently. Do you have a question for the audience? I can certainly make up one right now whilst I'm not trying to store it anyway, whilst I think of an actual question for the audience. Do it. <laughs> do but, it. Do it. So, ladies and gentlemen, with the Olympics coming going go goingly going on my brain can't speak begin that again <laughs> ladies and gentlemen with the olympics currently going on what is the event you're currently looking forward to the most actually i suppose are you even watching the olympics do you actually even care about the olympics answer all three that will do what is your think of the olympics yes do you even olympic bro <laughs> <laughs> right. I want to see a means Olympic. Like, how would they measure that? It's like, do you even lift, bro? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, everyone, thank you so much for listening. Stuart, thank you so much for being with us today. Well, with hey. me today, actually. Yeah. Hey, good to talk to you too, bro. <laughs> it was a pleasure. So, don't forget to listen to the outro to find out how to interact with us. And until next week, go Olympic, bro. Bye. Yeah. Go lift, bro. See you later. Thanks for listening to the Shifty Key Podcast. The intro and outro music is provided to us by our editor, TDB Tyler. To get more involved with the Shifty Key Podcast, you can answer the questions for the audience asked by our guests, or even ask the cast a question of your very own, either here in the YouTube comments or in our Rooster Teeth group. To keep updated with this channel's shenanigans, you can follow us on Twitter, join and watch our group on Rooster Teeth, or simply subscribe. All links will be in the description. Until next week, goodbye. How do you even Olympic? How do you even Olympic? I assume there's a lot of bad hurdles and a javelin throw through someone's neck. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Maybe light up a torch or something? No, that's the angry mob afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> There were a few attempts at uh, extinguishing the the fire here in Brazil. It doesn't it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> there was one that was really surprising. It's like someone threw a fuckload of water from a building, and then at first, like it seemed like it was flour. A flour, if I'm not mistaken, flour can burn. You know, it ignites. So if that was really flour, that would have been a fucking disaster. But it was just water. And uh, people were like, oh, my God, and trying to uh, get the athlete that was holding the torch out of the way. And then there, there was this one guy, this one security person who just jumped like, man, he jumped really scared. And for some reason, the, the motion he made was really funny. I'll try to find that, that gif. I can't make any promises, though. I don't even remember why I saw it.
So I am going to hit the thingy. Any last words for the audience, Seward? No, oh, I think we're good with the audience. Thank you very much for listening, as always, though. So, audience?